All right, here we go. Question number 20 from our college algebra homework number four in our MyLab math. It wants us to find the rational zeros and then the other zeros of the polynomial function. It says that means solve f of x equal to zero. So I've got my function written down over here. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're, we're going to notice that this function has a degree of three. And remember, the degree means that there's going to be three zeros. And it gives me no indication as to what the zeros are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show the rational zero theorem to come up with the possible rational zeros. And then we're going to use synthetic division to see if we can find one. So remember, for the rational zero theorem, we need to take all of the factors of the constant and divide by all of the factors of the lead coefficient. So all of the factors of 9, that's going to be 1, 3, and 9. Those are all of the factors of 9. The factors of the lead coefficient, well, only 1 goes into 1. And since the denominator is only one, if I look at all possible combinations of all of these factors, it's just going to be everything over one, which means that the possible rational zeros are plus or minus one, plus or minus three, and plus or minus nine. And so now we're going to crank out the synthetic division looking for a possible rational zero. Now, I don't know if you noticed this, but there are six numbers here to pick from. And so you're just going to have to pick one to start with and hope that it works. We're going to start with plus one. The coefficients are one, negative seven, nine, and nine. And then we're going to crank out the synthetic division. Remember, if 1 is a 0, it'll produce a 0 remainder. Here we go. The 1 comes down. 1 times 1 is 1. Add them up. Multiply. Add them up. Multiply. And that is not 0. So that means that positive 1 is not a 0. And then we need to try negative 1. And remember, you're just going to have to go through this list of possible rational zeros, hoping that one of them produces a zero remainder. All right, here we go. One, negative seven, nine, and nine. Cranking out the synthetic division again. One comes down, multiply, add them up, multiply, add them up, multiply, add them up, and that is not zero either. So that means that negative one is not a zero, and that means that there's no zero from that part. Now let's try positive three. One, negative seven, nine, and nine. Cranking out the synthetic division again, the one comes down, three times one is three. Add them up, multiply, Add them up. Let's see, that's negative 3, negative 9. Uh-oh, look out. We've got a 0 remainder. That means that we have found a real 0. And if you look right down here below that, you can see that I've already graphed this function in Desmos, and Desmos verifies that that 3 is a 0. It is an x-intercept or a 0. So now I know that 3 is a 0. We're going to come back up here. And remember I said that the 1, negative 4, and negative 3, those are the coefficients of the quotient, which in this case would be 1x squared minus 4x minus 3. If I set that equal to 0 and solve, I can find the other solutions, the other zeros. And again, I'm going to use completing the square to solve this, since the coefficient of x is even, it's going to work pretty nicely. Bringing the negative 3 over makes that a plus 3. That's going to give me x squared minus 4x plus, I've got nothing there now, 
equals 3. Now we're going to complete the square. We need to take half of the coefficient of x. Half of negative 4 is negative 2. That number gets squared, and that gives us our new constant. And remember, whatever I add to one side, I have to add to the other. Gives me a plus 4. All right, so now I've got x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals 4 plus 3 is 7. And then I'm going to try to factor this trinomial. Now it should factor nicely if you completed the square correctly. So the signs are both going to be negative, x and x to make x squared. And the numbers that multiply to make 4 and add to make 4, 2, and 2. x minus 2 quantity squared, since those factors are identical. And then I'm going to need to take the square root of both sides to get rid of that squared. So that's going to give me x minus 2 equals, now square root of 7 doesn't square root nicely, but since I square rooted both sides, I do need a plus and a minus square root of 7. And now for the last step, we're going to bring the negative 2 over to get the x by itself. And so my other two zeros are 2 plus square root of 7 and 2 minus square root of 7. Those are my other two zeros. So the three zeros are 3, remember this 3 worked, 2 plus square root of 7, and 2 minus square root of 7. So let's see, there is only one rational zero. That is correct. The only rational zero here is 3, and the other zeros are 2 plus square root of 7, move out, comma, 2 minus square root of 7. And let's check and see if that's right. Yeah. Now, there is a part B. The factorization of f of x into linear factors. Type an exact answer using radicals as needed. So we're going to need to use the radicals that we got here. Simplify your answer, time and expression, using x as the variable. All right, so here we go. So remember that we said x equals 3. That was a 0. x equals 2 plus square root of 7. And x equals 2 minus square root of 7. Those were the three zeros or the three solutions. Now, to turn those back into factors, you have to move those numbers back over. So the first factor here would be x minus 3. The next factor would be x minus 2 minus square root of 7. And the last factor would be x minus 2 plus square root of 7. And so if we input that, we're going to have parentheses x minus 3, x minus 2, minus square root of 7, tab, and x minus 2, plus square root of 7, tab, and fingers crossed, yeah, that's it. So, I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put those in the comment section below, or you can text me if you'd like. And thanks for watching.